I got gorgeous, delicious Gucci here in the building. Thank you for making it out. Thank you for having me. Thanks for uh, having this little sit down, sit down chat. Let me get to know you a little bit better. I'm a big fan of you, just you know, seeing you out on the floor and stuff like that. So, first, uh, were you born and raised in Chicago? Um, yeah, I was born and raised in Chicago. My grandparents are Nigerian. My grandparents, my grandfather, not my grandparents. My grandfather is Nigerian. Okay. But we, I was born in Chicago, raised in Chicago. Okay, and um, were you from the west side or the east side? No, I'm actually from the low end, low end. Okay. Now, I'm lying. Well, I'm from the low end, but I'm actually from Inglewood. I was um, um, raised in Inglewood, but I um, eventually moved to like the low end of Chicago. Okay. And when was the first time you ever like got introduced to ballroom uh, in general? Whether it be just seeing Vogue for the first time or whatever. Oh my God. I, you know what? I always wanted to say this. So this is so crazy. So when I was a junior lifeguard, just before I like knew anybody on the scene, just before I kind of even transitioned or anything, and I was a junior lifeguard, and the lifeguard, it was one gay man, he was a lifeguard, and his name was Nemo, and when I come to the beach to do lifeguard, and he'll talk to me, and he boom just said, he was like, I know this thing, this dance that you like. And I'm like, what dance, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, like I know, I know you're gonna like it, I just know, because I, right, at that point, I wasn't even out. Right. Or nothing. He was just like, I guess he was talking to me because he figured he knew. He was like, I know this thing. She was like, he was like, look it up. And he wrote it down on his paper and it was like, and it said, um, Vogue. And I put it into YouTube. And when I started watching it, I was seeing like clips of like, I didn't even know who these people was yet. But I was seeing Yolanda. I was seeing Leone. I was seeing like clips of um, Deja. And I'm like, and how old was you? When this I was like 15. I was like okay. six, like 14, 15. I was a junior lifeguard. Like, and I'm like, okay, what's this? So now I'm in the room just playing this loudest, loudest, like, just the beat and looking at them vocal. And I'm like, what's this? And I'm just jumping on the bed, like, doing, trying to do what they do. Mm. But that's the first time I ever knew anything about Barbara, like, from this lifeguard. I didn't even know nothing about the scene or nothing. He just mm. told me that he thought I would like this type of dance. And he had referred me to it. Okay. So from there, uh, how did you transition from that into... You know, walk your first ball. Um, I hope if, if Nemo see this and he's like, I know her, I told her, because he he told me I would like like it and um and that's so crazy. I came up to actually be in ballroom and it was just so crazy to me from that moment. Mm -hmm. My first ball I walked, I was like 007, not a nobody house. Um, everybody knew me from spectator. Everybody knew me because I got a big personality, everybody just knew me. Because right. I was around, but I was a spectator. So I decided to walk my first ball, which it was a family scene ball, which in Chicago, we was like really big on a family scene. Right. It kind of was in place of what Kiki is, but it was like family. It was for Chicago. Right. And I walked my first ball on Vogue, and of course I got chopped. Like everybody would say, like they first ball, they already got chopped, or they make right. it through. It's not a lot of people that walk their first ball on the end. So explain to people that might not know, like, what's the difference between the family scene in the regular ballroom scene. So basically, the family scene was something that was made in Chicago. So basically, it was just like ballroom, but these were like families. So we had Baldwin, we got YJ. I was an overall mother of a family called Prada. And these are like Chicago-based Kiki houses. You could say Kiki, but it wasn't Kiki. It was called family scene. So it's basically molded just like the ballroom scene, it's, except in its own yeah, entity. It's exactly. Like, and I feel like it was a it was a way to get Chicago girls ready for ballroom kind of to a certain degree. It was like it was like that little that little stairway between like going to actual real ballroom because we all was like in like family scene. We all wanted to be in a family scene. We all wanted to be in a family. Right. Okay. So uh, that first family ball you walked. What was the first? How should you ever join? So I was actually um, in the family scene per se. We was like, I was like in like one of my friends' house. But then I started feeling like, you know, I got cloud. I feel like I can make a house myself, a family right. scene house. And me and Snoopy had made, ended up making a um, family scene house called Prada. And we was in a family scene, but the family scene eventually ended up dying because it's like ballroom started to take over. Like ballroom just kept going and everybody just joined the ballroom. So. Um, I was like a 007 in ballroom. So now family scene is over. Family scene is really like less. There's not really no events, no ball. So now it's just ballroom. 
and I'm a 007 and I'm coming and I'm spectating, but I'm not really walking. I walk real as like once as a 007. Um, I never voted or nothing. I just walk real as. And I could compensate too, so I was like, I wanted to walk there, but I was nervous because I didn't have a house. Um, I walked 007 for a while and um, Jahari had seen me and was like, um, you know, I live with you. Um, I really want you with my daughter. And I'm like, okay, because Jahari had like um, Layla, Balmain, December, and these other like kids that was calling Jahari like their mother. So I'm like, okay, that's cute. I don't have no family. I don't have no house. So, and Jahari was telling me that they was going to revamp Herrera, which is a big house in Chicago. Right. Um, not in Chicago, just in general, a big house in Baltimore, right. Herrera. Like, you know, you have Skittles, Puda, all those legends and icons were like Herrera, Marco. And we tried to revamp Herrera. It was a few of us from the Midwest, and Jahari is the one of the mothers. And it wasn't really that, it wasn't really like, that one because like I said we were trying to build a house back that was old that had all these iconic people in there and you don't have some of the original members it just it don't feel the same so so Marco wasn't involved really like that Marco I don't, Marco wasn't really involved in like that I think Marco really did live for a person I think Marco was like giving bitch y'all trying to reopen my house <laughs> or it was giving some shade so yeah. after that happened Anthony Hart was like I got a plan for us y'all gonna live for this and I'm like what he introduced us. Now, mind you, I already knew Contrero from around the scene. Contrero already knew me. But it was never like, this was never like somebody I was like, all you were really close to him. Exactly. And he called me, and Jahari called me, and was like, I got a um, plan for us. We finna all become Ms. Rahi. And I'm like, okay, that sounds cute. You know, Ms. Rahi, yeah. high house. And I'm like, okay, we in a, we finna start in ballroom. Why not? Um, We went to our first house meeting. We was the Herreras. It was a little group of us. It was me, Layla, December, Blue, um, Drizzy. It was a, a few of us, like six of us. So we all went to Ms. Rahi. Now, now to this day, I was the only one out of all of us that went there was that was still a Ms. Rahi, that stayed with Ms. Rahi. So I ended up walking my first ball, which was the Fahrenheit ball, as a Ms. Rahi, debuting as a Ms. Rahi, and I won performance. Now, usually people knew me. What year was that? This is 2018. Okay. Now, normally people knew me for walking realness, but I could vote too a little bit. So I'd be like, okay, I'll vote. And as my debut as Ms. Rahi, I was like, I want to vote because I feel like I had a house behind me. And as I when I debut, I won performance as a Ms. Rahi. And ever since then, I was like loyal to the Mrs. That was my house. I started to like become, like go everywhere walking with them and like, Chicago, just taking over the Midwest in general, because I wasn't even really walking out of state as much. I was still like in Chicago based, like Midwest. So what made you stay in the house even after the person that brought you to the house left? So I began to like get a real, real strong connection with Kentrio. I was like calling Kentrio my dad and stuff, and I never had like a real actual gay dad. So I got a real close bond with Kentrio. And when Jahari and everybody left, Kentrio was just like, you not leaving. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to stay. But I live for Mizza. I live for him. I'm like, this is a this is a big house. They, when I walk out there, I feel it on the runway. I'm like, I live for it. He was like, you're not leaving. I don't care if everybody else can leave, but you're not leaving. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to stay around, you know, because I'm just new anyway. And they look, they seem like they went in. So you know how everybody is when they first come out to our room. And um, now I start to walk in like the Midwest. Control will take me out to like balls in the Midwest, he would like be like, come on, we going to this ball and we would literally drive back to Ohio, um, Kentucky, and we would drive these places and I'd walk and Kentrell would be there cheering me on, all the business would be there. It was like a, a big thing. And like after I started walking like realness, I started walking performance and then I started to dabble into commentation, commentating because I commentated too. Um, me and Katrina was sitting down, and he was like, okay, now you you doing your shit, you becoming cute. And I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I live for it. And he was like, see, if you would have left, you know, what would you would have been, you know? And we just had a discussion. He was like, you know what? We need to come up with a sickening name for you. And I'm like, right, I need a sickening name because Didi is cute. Yes, Didi is cute. But I want a performance name. I want an alter ego, like everybody. And we were sitting down, we said like, juicy. We said this, we said that. And then we both was like, delicious. And then from there, it was like, I'm delicious, Ms. Riley. And everything I did was like delicious. I walked, um, I was like, I started to just take the Midwest by storm, basically like just walking. Even if I wasn't winning as much, I was still walking every ball, every lineup. Right. My house was going up for me. Um, 
I was this was coming up to my one mark year of being a Mr. Rocky and this was the same ball that I won originally. It was the Fahrenheit ball. And this is my one year anniversary. And you know, I walked, I didn't win a ball this year when I walked, but it was my one year anniversary, so I was feeling it. And then I got a call from like Courtney, which was the um at the time she I don't even think she was the mother of Ms. Ryan yet. And I, I think she was in the process of becoming the mother um, of Ms. Ryan. And she was like, mm, we finna leave. I got a call. I'm like, what's going on? Well, why everybody leaving the house? You know, she like, you to see what's going on. And I'm like, what's going on? So then I go to Facebook and I see that um, Andre had made this statement about transgender women. And it like caused the whole ballroom scene an uproar because I guess Andre is an icon and they just didn't expect this to come from this icon. So it just like, all the trans women start leaving this right he did all other people start leaving were you personally affected by uh his statements well i never even saw the statement until the next day when i saw the statement i was just like you know whatever because i'm just like you're not talking about me what? and i don't feel the way he might have been arguing with somebody and you know and people say stuff that they don't mean all the time and i was just like you know uh if it didn't personally affect me and he didn't come to me and say you're not this and you're not that Mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever, because I'm not really thinking about all of this. I'm thinking more about my ballroom career and where I'm going. So, but Courtney and Kentrell was like, well, no, we don't, we, we're not going to support that. We're not going to, um, we're not going to condone that. And, you know, and I understood where they were coming from as well, protecting your trans women, of course. And I was just like, okay, well, I'm doing whatever y'all doing. So for like two, three months, we literally was like walking balls and, they wasn't like spring Mizza. We were just walking. We wasn't even in the house. I don't know what was going on. Like we were just walking the country. I was like, it's okay. We we going we got something planned. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. Um, it is what it is. If I end up leaving and going somewhere else, you know, because this going on, or I might end up staying and letting them leave. I don't know. I didn't know what to do. So Control called a meeting and he was like, y'all, we gonna all officially leave Mizza because everybody it was like some people had left some people haven't some people said they left they didn't know what was going on so he was like we're going to officially leave Mizza mm -hmm. and we're going to go to uh, we're going to we're going to build another house um with Jack um Kelly Marlin you know the the founders they're going to be the founders and they, they didn't want to tell us the name and stuff and we was like what is it what is it we so excited i'm like okay that sounds bad you know i'm i guess so they didn't tell y'all the name my first no they didn't tell us the name they didn't tell us nothing they just told us that we were building a house and they wanted us to trust them so they like why y'all let her walk in don't go to no house don't let no house get y'all y'all can walk but don't you know don't trade on us we go we got something for y'all in the long run they didn't want to tell us mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, whatever. It seemed cute. It seemed cool. So I was literally walking 007. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Now, uh, coming October, it was like we were trying to debut our house. So right the week before we left, they told us, like, our, our house has two names. And we already knew, like, it's only, like, uh, one house in the that really has two names, Yaki Nuclear. And they, like, you know, and it was like, um, they was like, they was like, this was gonna be an iconic moment for us because we was gonna be a second ballroom house to have come out with two names. So I'm like, okay, it's, this must be for the tournament or whatever. So we all buying our tickets to go to New York for Mugler Ball. Because this is around the time like when Mugler Ball was happening. And we go to New York, we fly out there, and we have a house meeting. Now, this is when they disclose the name to us because we all there is um, it's Kelly, Marvin, Jack. Lola, Trace, it's everybody's there. And it's the Chicago chapter, the Midwest chapter, we all came. And they say, okay, so we're debuting our house tomorrow and the name of our house is Gorgeous Gucci. So everybody just looking like, Gorgeous Gucci. I'm just mm -hmm. like, okay, I guess that's cute or whatever, <laughs> you know. And it was like, because, you know, and it was like, right now, this was the first ever meeting that we had as a gorgeous Gucci and thing. And they were just they were just explaining to us like how important it is as a house for us to be together. And even though that we had all left Mizza, that even though we were small, because a lot of people were still with Mizza, we were kind of smaller. And we like, even though we're not gonna let that discourage us, we still gonna come out as a house we're gonna debut. And we're gonna walk on the Mall. So I was super nervous because I'm like, okay, we finna make history. We finna be the first 
founding members of this house. Like, so this house, wherever the house goes, we're going to be the first original founding member. So we basically miss making history. Um, and at the Mugler Ball, it had it was a category. My category specifically was for five thousand okay. dollars. So I was really nervous because I'm like, okay, this is my my real official first time debuting in another house. I haven't been in no house in a while since Mizza. Um, I haven't voted in a while, and this was for five thousand dollars. And you know they were stressing like how important this was and how how stern the judges were going to be. And I'm just like, oh my god. Was it? Would you say that's your favorite moment in ballroom so far? My five thousand dollars. Yeah. Yes, of course that's my favorite moment because it's just like it was it was a big thing. I, 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 That was like one of my best moments and one of my favorite moments because it was just like, like I said, we was opening the house. And that was, I was the first person to walk under Gorgeous Gucci. I was the first person ever to walk mm -hmm. anything under the house of Gorgeous Gucci. And I actually ran through a lot of people that were like household names like Pandora West and um, um, London. Um, she was a Balenciaga and Kamaya Balenciaga and these girls Vogue and it was like and this was for five thousand dollars and I literally was like running through everybody and literally made it to the last battle with me and Tutu West and people still to this day always tagging me and posts and saying to this day that was DD five thousand dollars and I believe delicious to the one and everything and it's like I was just so. I was so surprised because it was like me opening the house and being the first person to walk under this house, that was a great way to open it. So, mm. I not only that, but like all of the Midwest girls that was in that category. I don't care about them. Yeah, you, not, you not, know, not like, no, the Midwest was there. Like, when they know. I mean, you, I'm saying you was representing on like so many different levels. Not yes. only for your house, but for the Midwest. I thought you were saying the girl that was in the Midwest girls that was in the lineup. No, I mean just like all of y'all, y'all exactly. all went to New York and, and fucked it up and you like you said you got the furthest out of everybody. Um so yeah, I think But that don't matter, don't make me see yeah, like I'm saying I got you. <laughs> but I understand what you're saying though, like just representing me in general, I was just so happy representing for the Midwest. Right. Representing for uh, the big girls, the bitches with hips and body, the bitches that feel like they can't they can't do this because, you know, and that's what they label me like, oh, the thick girl that votes like a skinny bitch because I be out there <laughs> keeping up with these girls that's this little flipping and doing all this and I'm spinning and doing everything right with them, you know, and giving all my elements and, you know, giving a performance. I'm a performer. I always perform. I always dance since I've been little. But it was just like, there was a lot of um, pressure, pressure on me. So ever since then, that's how um, Delicious Gucci came because it was like, okay, we're in this new house, Delicious Gucci, you know, I started to, work. I was like, I'm st sticking with this because this name is like my brand, I'm going to stick to this, Delicious mm -hmm. Gucci. And Jack and Marlon, they were like so excited, they were so happy for me that I opened the house in that way, like, right. they were just looking at me like, oh my God, like, we love her, and this is like my real first time ever even meeting Jack. Like in person, for real, and I like love Jack. I always see Jack on all clips and stuff. That was your first time meeting him. That was my first time really meeting him in person. Um, as a Mizrahi, I never met him. I never met him as a Mizrahi because right, so you said you going in the house for like a year. Only a year, right. yeah. So I never met Jack. I always just heard about Jack, and I'm like, oh my god, Jack does all these great things. Is this great person? I see Jack in all the clips that I ever watched. So I was just like, it's just like seeing a star. Right. And when I met this person. They were just as nice as I thought they would be, and Jack was like, that's my mom to this day. And so, she was just like, Jack was just infatuated. Like, I love Dee Dee, I love Delicious. And he was like, 
we're gonna get you on a show. And I'm just like, okay, I, I, I live for that. I, I live for that. And I'm, I'm literally like not even thinking like what's really going on. But and the whole time Jack is like the executive, um, like script that, um, script writer, executive um, producer of HBO Max, legendary. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that at the time. So I'm just like, okay. Um, he's like, I'm gonna get you on a ballroom show. We're gonna make sure you get on there because we see it for you. And because I just what I had just did in um, New York, I literally had the whole world talking about me. Like literally, like everybody was like sharing my clips, spam my clips. So many people from all over the world, they were just like inspiring. People still to this day keep tagging me in that ball, like <laughs> like delicious. Yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah. So and people really like you know live for me from that moment. And so I'm just like, okay, Jack, you know what I'm saying that he gonna get me on the show. And I'm, and I'm now I'm seeing polls and stuff and Jack was like the um, on polls and actually helping write polls so I'm like I hope it's a show like that and not even like about four or five months later I got a call from an email from Jack telling me like send him my Instagram send him everything and I sent him my Instagram and then he was like okay now send your clips and send pictures to these people and I'm like who is these people so I'm like I'm just like excited like okay What's going on? And then I got an email from the cast mother of the show. And I'm just like, okay. And they're like, you guys have been selected. Your House of Gorgeous Gucci have been selected to be on HBO Max new show series Legendary. It's going to be a, a ballroom competition show. So I'm just like, I'm just like kind of shocked. And so I'm like, my, they said I'm going to be on TV. They said I'm going to be on um, HBO Max. So I'm not sure how true it's going to be. But I'm just like so excited. So we went through the process with that. We did the interviews. We did the Skype interviews. We sent in our clips. We talked to the um, one of the producers. We was like exchanging information. And by January of that new year of 2019, or well, maybe no, it was 2019 because it's almost going to be. This is the second season. So they're working on the second season of Legendary, yeah. and it's 2021 now. In 2020, so that means we went in 2019. So in January of like 2019, they were literally flying us out to New York as a house, me, Deshaun, Jeter, and Miracle as a house to come to New York to participate in the show. And you know, I was just like so excited because I never, I have been on show before. I did Jerry Springer, I did other like little YouTube reality show. But I never was like on a mainstream network like HBO Max, wow. and we were the we were the premiere show of the app. Right. Like we wasn't just a show on the app; we actually premiered the app. Yeah. And have you felt that because uh, when you walk balls, there's a certain attention you get from it. Have you felt a different type of attention from being on that show? Well, the a lot of people like. Even for me walking bars in general and just going out there and walking my category and poking, people would like blow up my social media, blow me up on Facebook and everything, just seeing like how much I inspire them or how much I make them want to vote or how much I want to do this. So from the show, it was like the same, that same attention. Like when I come to a ball, like when I was just in LA recently, um, I won't feel quick performance. I was just in LA and it's just like everybody kept coming up to me like, oh my God, delicious Gucci, yes. And just giving me my life like, oh my God, you, you were so good on the show. You were so, everywhere I go is like, I'm, they talking about the show. They saying, I did good on the show, I did this. Or if I'm going to the airport, the, the TSA, like delicious Gucci. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I was just like feeling special, of course. Um, I feel like I've been getting that same type of love. It has increased a lot because a lot of people see me from the show and from another perspective that they don't see me from. Okay. See me like a, com see me being competitive, see me being irritated, seeing a lot of stuff that they don't usually see from me. Right. So. so one thing I hear um, from a lot of people as far as like criticism about Legendary is they say that, oh, it's not any like black people producing the show, but mm -hmm. it's all black talent, but it's not nobody on the production side. But like you just said, Jack is uh, on the writing team. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about hearing those type of criticisms um, about the show? Um, well, um, everybody has their opinion. And like they said, it's not, it is black people that on the team, but 
they are right. It is a lot of white people who who is making this making this show. But like they said, they have to understand because they don't know about the show. Um, it was it was um, thrown away and then gave back to somebody else, and then they came back and they said, okay, we're going to allow them to do this. So to be honest about Legendary, they didn't even want the real ballroom cast. They didn't want a black cast, and those. And those white people that they were referring to, that people were referring to about Legendary, actually made it their duty to get the real ballroom cast, like the real black ballroom cast or the real ballroom cast. So even though it was a lot of um, white people that were working on set, they were all they were here for showcasing ballroom and showcasing the real original ballroom and not going and just getting actors. Um, it was just as many black people working on set though. It was we had the cast mother, she was black, Jack, security, um, some of the um crew, a lot of the crew was black, a lot of the producers that would produce some of our scenes were black, so mm-hmm. it was it was but um hearing a lot of stuff, I heard a lot of stuff from Legendary. I heard a lot of people say um weird things that oh they stole the idea, they did this and I um, I know a lot of people speaking out of like because they were irritated because maybe they wanted to be on there. Sure. Sure. Or maybe they wanted to get the idea or maybe they wanted to do that because there's a few people who are now trying a creating ballroom shows as well that's in the community and they could have been did that. It's like I just feel like whoever was able to get the money and get the idea and put it together for one doesn't mean they actually stole it, you know. They yeah. were just able to complete the idea. They were just a the middleman or the catalyst to get it to a bigger stage. Yeah, because I'm best believe if the community was having a ballroom show, I'm not going to be competing with you just to be showing mm-hmm. showcase the ballroom. They were actually paying us to compete, thousands. So mm-hmm. we was getting paid. They had a, a set set up for us, like to say, okay, yeah, y'all are going to get this to compete in this competition. So, because if somebody would have came in and me from ballroom clips and did like, hey, I'm having a ballroom show and I want to do this. I'm me being a person I am, I already would have been still like, hey, yeah, I'll do it just like I did with Signal 23. Because I actually did that right before Legendary. Okay. Signal 23 had hit me up all the way in New York and told me that they wanted me to do a Paris is Burning. Like, it was like a Vogue series, just like Legendary, but this was right before Legendary came out. But Signal 23, it was very raunchy. They did the whole episode season in one day. But I went all the way to, to, to New York on a bus just to participate in this. And I don't even think we got paid, you know? Damn. We didn't get, I don't think we got paid. It was just an opportunity. And it was like, at that moment, I was just like hoping for the opportunity. But see, right when I turned around, I even some few months later, that opportunity came for me. That was a paid opportunity to get paid to do the same thing. So, but now at this day, if somebody came to me and was like, can you do this or something like that, I wouldn't do it. I would I want that money, of course. But. Yeah. That's what's up.
now since you've been on the show, um, it's it's like your barbering career is like now an actual career. So have you began to like treat it differently, like being a now a professional dancer? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so I always was like, I consider myself a professional dancer because I danced in Chicago, the Bud Billing Parade, if anybody is familiar with that, I did that for um, several years, so I always treated my dance and my art as a craft. When I did get on the show, I did start to treat it a little bit different though, I started to make myself say, okay, if I want to be labeled as something like, okay, I'm on a, a billion dollar TV show that just spent billions of dollars. If I want to be labeled as a celebrity, if I want to be labeled as something, I have to treat myself as such. So I have to make stuff private. I have to make stuff look better, you know? And I just, I, like every bar, I don't come out to every bar like that no more. Like I was coming out to every bar and I'm gonna come out for my house to support, but I'm only, I come out to certain bars that I know I'm walking for sure. I know I'm making an appearance. So I know that I'm doing something while I'm coming to shake the room up. So that it can be like a, people are anticipated, anticipated to see me. Um, I haven't been doing that more lately, like I just did in LA. I haven't walked in like four or five months. And then I just went to LA and I won some quick performance. And it was a, a nice moment for me to like come back out. A lot of people see me vulgar, well, a lot of people didn't want to see me. So I have been treated different though. Of course, I've been treated delicious Gucci, like my brand. That's my brand now. That's like yeah. me, it's my yeah. brand. So. Everything is delicious Gucci, like, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, I, I definitely see that, I definitely um, think you got a very bright future ahead of you. You got a good personality. You even see that, like, when you vlog and stuff. You're very competitive, like, when you walk in real and stuff. So, I, I definitely uh, think, you know, the sky's the limit for you, and not even that. So, um, tell me, like, as far as, like, ballroom in general, what is your favorite thing about being in ballroom, whether it be the actual competition or the, being in a house? What is your favorite thing about being a part of ballroom culture? Okay. So, let me say this. I don't like competing with no bitch. Nobody. I don't like competing with nobody. I feel like competing, we all are competitive, so it, it really takes the fun out when you're competing. I hate to compete. That's the first thought. I wish that we could all just do it instead of have to compete against each other. Mm. But my 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 best favorite thing about ballroom to me is like just the fact of being like artistic and able to like express that art that you have. So just say like they tell you to bring it like Shanae or they tell you to bring it like this or bring it like that. I love costumes, I love makeup. I'm, I was born around Halloween. My birthday is one week before Halloween. So I love like makeup, prosthetics. I'm dressing up in costumes. I love embodying other characters. As you can see, I did Marilyn Monroe, and they were saying like, "Bitch, they thought I was Marilyn Monroe." Mm -hmm. So it's just like that's the. To me, I love my family, and I love the fact that we have the family bond. But I'm not gonna lie, the best thing for the ballroom to me is the the fact you're able to express that artistic, that artistic bug that you have when you want to like create effects and mm -hmm. like make stuff and like bring things to life. That's what I love the most. So the creative expression of it all. Yeah, and it's like, the dancing is fun, the, the voguing is fun, don't get me wrong, it's tiring, but it's fun. <laughs> but I like to like see like see my effect come out, like, okay, I gotta bring it like this, and I and my effect has came out, and I look in the mirror, and I'm like, I actually look like this cartoon. Or I have to bring it like Penny Brown, and I want to get the effect, and I actually look like Penny Brown. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, I'm ready to dance. <laughs> okay, so what's the worst part about ballroom? To me, the worst part about ballroom is... <laughs> I think it's the worst part about ballroom is like the people, the people who make it like so they make it so like because this is like a, I look at ballroom as like the LGBTQ Olympics. That's what I look at it as because it's just like Olympics. When we competed, we competed for trophies. We competed for other years. We competed for gold medals, and, and you know I just feel like what I don't. The worst thing for me is the people who bring like all the bad, bad energy. Like, um, just say if someone's on a panel and they're like coming on a panel with bias, or this person they have a um, opinion about this person, or they don't like this person, or person yeah. And, and I just feel like that's what makes it like so irritating because anybody can come on a panel and just be like, I don't even like that bitch. Mm, I'm gonna vote for the next, even if she knows she was supposed to get it. But that would never really change because you'll never you would never know what somebody's vendetta is when they get up on that panel or when they in the room. So but that's personally what I don't like is because 
I wish that people could be biased and come to the judges panel, come to the ball, come to everything just biased with an open man, no matter if you were a legend, icon, statement, or star. Bitch, if you got did, you got did. If if you did, if you did, the girl you did. You know, I just wish everybody would use that bias because it would make it just a little bit funner. Even though you know some people don't like to lose. If you're supposed to be like an icon or a legend, of course you don't want to lose to a statement or a star. But it's still, it's like it's it's a game. Right. And right. sometimes you lose the game, sometimes you win the game, but you still live to play again. Right. That's understandable. Um, are there any categories that you haven't walked that you would like to walk in the future? Yeah, so, I mean, I walk, I'm a commentator, I walk really, yeah. Um, I wanna, like, I wanna walk in performance, cause I walk in performance, like in a key scene, I wanna walk in performance. I like best dress, cause like I said, I like to like put things together. Okay. So best dress can be something that I like. Um, I wanna walk body, of course. Everybody say when we walk body, but well, I just be paying it. But I might dare everybody or something like that if I get like the right support or right or the right or the right people to like amp me up to do it. Cause mm -hmm. that's how I vote all the time. It's always my bitches on the side, like amp me up, like <laughs> you better vote. Mm -hmm. So I need a little few categories. I wanna just be an all around film queen once I once I end in ballroom, I wanna be like the person that has done a lot in ballroom. Yeah. I'm not using it for to get a status and to fill it on somebody. So I'm not actually using it to like get better in all these aspects. Like, bitch, you walk in best dress, you know how to come to a motherfucking job interview sharp. You know how to do this, you know how to do this from ballroom. You're taking these ballroom things and putting it to your real life and it's like actually helping you and make you better. So. Yeah, I am an advocate of that as well. Um, so, I remember you said like, you, when you first got introduced to it, you went online and you started looking up clips. So if you think about it, like, you know, somebody's a little kid is probably watching your clips right now yes. and being inspired by you, especially by you being on that show and stuff. So what do you have to say to the generations after you to that wants to get in the ballroom, that wants to, you know, live their life how they see you live your life? Well, I want to say to them that I love them and I, I can't wait to see them and watch them on clips. And I, I, I want to say if you want to go for something, go for it. Don't ever let nobody stop you. Don't ever feel discouraged. Um, I found out this from a, a lifeguard that didn't even know me. And I wonder what they would say to me now if they, like, I can't even find this person. Like, I can't even find a lifeguard. I don't even know their government name, so I couldn't even find a if I wanted to, and I wonder what they would say to me, like, and look at me now, like, remember what I told you when you was younger? And I just want to say, if anybody looking at me, like, just live your life. Don't let nobody tell you what to do or how to do it. Don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Just do it. Like, even, no matter what you do, do it with pride, because even you have to mess up in order to get better. So, even if you mess up, even if you get chopped, even if you did, still go out there and put your foot on their neck, because at the end of the day, that's what's gonna matter more than anything. When they see that you're like consistent, when they see that you're not giving up, and they see that you're a fighter, people are gonna love that in you, and they're gonna wanna like, be like, oh yeah, I really love that person. And then the end is gonna play out good for you. Mm -hmm. So if anybody watching this that, you know, is inspired by me, I'm so grateful for that. Like, I love to see people tell me like, I inspire them, because that's what I live to do. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And it, like I said, it's inevitable because when you think about how you got introduced to it and how you started learning about it, you know, the internet that's ain't going like, nowhere. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> not going nowhere. That's why I say it's so crazy to me because I was just in a bed the other day and I lady was crying because I was like, I wonder, I wonder is that person that told me about it, is they okay or how they're doing or what are they doing now? Or have they seen me on a clip and like, I don't, I don't even think they'll be able to notice me now because like it's been a, I have transitioned and I would have to probably sit down to them and tell them like, hey, this is me from there. But I don't even know if I can remember them and it's so crazy because I just remember the first day they told me like, hey, go look at this on YouTube. I know you're gonna like it. And I'm just listening to it in the back and I'm like, oh, it's a beat. And the beat was by, it was like, bitch, 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 I don't like you, bitch. And I'm like, what is this? Like, but I'm looking at people dancing to it and I'm like, oh my God, I actually like that style of dance. And now look at me, I have made a career out of something that somebody, out of, out of that dance and out of what somebody offered me when I was younger. And they didn't even know if I was out or anything. They were just like, 
they just saw what they mean. They just like, I just know that this is something that you would like. Yeah. Okay. It makes me so sad because I never got to tell that person thank you. So if they watch this or they see this, like, at least I tell them thank you. And hopefully that will, I will be the same person to somebody else that they were to me to feel like, oh, I want to thank, thank Dee Dee because she really made me see like being myself was like a, the best thing to do. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, it's just funny how life works because we never would, would encounter that person that day. Well, that, that's why I said, what would I, what, right. I, I don't know because of the friends I have, maybe I would have still found my room, but maybe it wouldn't have, maybe everything would have been different because like you said, one slight change can change everything. Mm -hmm. It's like a reaction to every. So if I would never met that person, what if I never would have knew or even looked up ballroom or ever even got friends with people that was in ballroom or anything? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even just knew about it. So maybe that's how I got like able so good to perform because it's just like watching those clips so young. I was watching them back to back to back to back. Mom had to come pull me off the computer like, what is this you watching? And she's looking at it. It's in VCR like it was in black and white. And she's like, what is this? I'm mm -hmm. like... I'm like, I don't know, but I just know it's cute. And now she's coming to my balls watching me and she's crying and like, Dee Dee, I remember when you was in the house, just jump around on the bed and falling on the floor. And I'm steady asking you like, what are you doing? And then I done made a career out of falling on the floor like the same. Yeah. That's what's up, that's what's up. So yeah, like I guess I'm glad um, we got a chance to sit down and finally do this and um, yeah, uh, it, it's you have you definitely have, have had a journey, and I can't wait to see like the next steps in your um, in your rise. Cause like I said, you definitely got it. So um, yes, and I'm working on more stuff like with my brand, Delicious Gucci. Um, I'm working. I can tell people because I got, but I'm working like on another show that I'm gonna be on, kind of. Okay. So. I'm working, I have a whole bunch of stuff that I'm just working on right now and it's like a quiet storm because it's going to just like when it come out, everything's going to come back, back, back. So tell people what your uh, social media is so they can find you, they keep up with you. So everything that I have is Delicious Gucci. Um, Instagram is Delicious underscore Gucci. Snapchat is Delicious um, underscore Gucci. Uh, everything, my fan page is Delicious Gucci. If you look me up on Google, Delicious Gucci, you can buy my merch at deliciousgucci.com. Okay. They can buy my sweaters. I have so many supporters that have been like, thank you so much. Y'all been buying my sweaters, buying my merch out, selling my merch out. Um, I'm just so grateful. And everything up. you can find is at Delicious Gucci. That's what's up. So, just this one last question describe yourself in five words or less. That's gonna be so hard for me. Describe myself in five words or less. Can I just say like the words? Sure. Cause if I say a sentence, I'm gonna go way over your five. Um outgoing, loving, understanding, loyal, and I just it's so many loyal and trustworthy. I mean, I, I like those characteristics because I feel like those characteristics make a good person. So if I had to describe myself in any kind of characteristics or any type of way, I want to describe myself in the best way that I feel like a person should be. Yeah, that's what's up. I, think I did forget one question I wanted to ask you. Who are your inspirations in Vulcan? Baby, I watch everybody, Yolanda, Cassandra, um, Leomi, Tamaya, um, I watch Jasmine, I watch Roxy, I watch Deja, I watch um, Sanaya, I watch everybody, like I literally, I feel like everybody had a little bit inspiration on me. The way I am, I take little pieces of everything, it just, mm -hmm. Like, it don't matter where it's from, it can be from this era, that era. And who out of, like, your generation, uh, or, you know, people that, people that didn't come before you, but maybe people that came after you or around the same time as you, that still inspire you? Oh, yes, a lot of so. Um, Amaya Mugler, she inspires me. Layla Balmain, my niece, Jamaya Balmain, um, TC, 
Gucci, Gia Gucci, like all my girls, they inspire me. Like, and they make me do better because I always, I feel like sometimes, like when I do my shit, I'm doing it for them. I'm mm -hmm. putting on for them. When they do their shit, they putting on for me. Like all of my girls really inspire me. I look at all of my girls, Taraya. I look at all of my girls and just be like, yes, we all flourishing into these great people, and that's what it's about. How do you like still battle them and not, <laughs> you know, get, you know, in your feelings? When I'm not. Go away? So one thing about me. Everybody let you know. I'm never pressed. Like I'm I don't know what it is or how I'm like that, but it's like nothing can ever press me ever. If we got into it about a battle or something, it had to be because of you because I'm not pressed about stuff like that. I can let a bitch can send me in a walk off whatever, because guess what? In my head, bitch, I won. So I'm not gonna <laughs> let it. I never let that a lot of people don't a lot of people know how to keep ballroom in ballroom. Mm -hmm. I know how to keep it right at the floor. I keep it right there. Whatever it is, it is. I have battled with my nieces. I battled my sisters, I have battled my grands, and I never got a tool with them because guess what? That ballroom is ballroom. Yeah. Keep it there. That's what's up. Well, like I said, thank you for coming. Um, I can't wait to see what's in store for you next. Like I said, just keep me updated. I'll be willing to you know, spread the word for you. And um, like I said, thank you for coming. Thank Everybody, you. it's gorgeous, delicious Gucci.